Hey guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome to the first episode of Tiny Tips with Tiff, where basically I teach you guys skills that I've learned in the NICU. So my first episode that I want to do today is teach you guys on how to do labs on babies. So of course doing labs is so different and every technique is so different. I'm sure you're gonna learn a lot from your preceptors or nurses on the unit. This is something that I've learned from one of my preceptors while I was working as a nurse, as a new grad and I've kept through with it and I think it works best for me. So I wanna share with you guys the tips on how I started getting better at doing labs. But one recommendation that I have for you guys is starting out as a new grad, try to schedule yourself on days that you know there's routine labs. So at my previous workplace, Monday labs, was a scheduled lab day. And so if I work nights, I would schedule myself Sunday night. So that way, Monday mornings, typically we do labs at around four to 6 a.m. And so usually I will schedule myself Sundays so that way I can do Monday morning labs. I've gotten so much better at the practice that I needed in order to get better at doing labs. So that is my recommendation and tip for you guys. Of course, labs is not always a routine scheduled day. You'll do labs sporadically whenever your patient needs it and whenever the doctors order it. But at some hospitals, I know there are places that have scheduled lab days. Um, so please schedule yourself for those days. That way, as a new grad, you can get a lot more practice. And if you work day shift, sometimes day shift may not do labs. For example, I work days and nights now, so I know the differences between the two. And working nights, definitely, I got a lot more practice with doing labs compared to day shift. It's not that often that I do labs on day shifts anymore, but I'm very glad that I started out as a new grad in night shift. That way I got the practice that I needed. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode and stay tuned. So guys, this is my mannequin. This is actually one that we use in the hospital to teach our parents how to do CPR on their babies. And since of COVID right now, we aren't able to go into skills lab to practice skills. So I thought I would take this and share with you guys how to do skills um, on a patient. So this skills lab day, we're gonna be learning how to do labs on our baby, which is something that I struggled a lot with when I first started. So I thought I would share with you guys some of my tips and tricks. So first things first, I wanted to make sure to share with you guys some of the lab supplies that we use. So of course, you're gonna need your infant heel warmer and definitely make sure to put this on. I recommend at least a minimum of 15 minutes. Um, you don't wanna put it on too long because then it really doesn't help and it actually clots your blood. So I recommend 15 minutes to the perfect time to be able to warm your baby's feet and as well as a diaper, and I'll show you the reason why I use this. Here are some of the tubes that we use for blood work. Um, I typically use the light green one and the pink one. The light green has heparin in it, and this one we use for our CBCs, our complete blood counts. So these two are the two most common ones that I use. Of course, you need a Band-Aid, an alcohol wipe, some gauze, and then this is a heel poker. All right, you guys, so make sure the first things first is to position your baby appropriately. Wrap your baby so that his arms don't move around and keep the legs exposed. So for this demonstration, I'm just gonna keep them unwrapped, but you wanna make sure to position your baby so that you're not awkwardly reaching over and it's not hurting your back. So I wanna make sure that when I'm positioning myself and my baby, that my baby's foot is kind of towards me so I'm not having to reach over anything and it's more comfortable for me. Make sure to adjust the height of your bed so you're not bending over over on your patient as well because that is going to hurt you so make sure to put an appropriate level usually I like to have it usually at my chest like a little bit le lower than my chest so right here is a very appropriate place that I would usually place my patient and then what I like to do is make sure that when I put all my supplies that it's in within reach so sometimes you can have a side table that you can put things on so I'm in this case I'll put my labs here so it's making it easier for me to reach things so the first things first is usually I like to grab my heel warmer and um, with this one to be able to activate it you actually squeeze it together like this and it'll activate the heat and then when it comes to putting it on your baby, you wanna to try to keep it for at least 15 minutes and that's usually um, the time limit that I put it on my baby to make sure it's fully warm. So depending on which leg you like to use, um, you can alternate, but my personal suggestion is to do the leg that's closest to you and that's why it's not so awkward for you to try to reach on this side. I typically like to do it the one closer to me. So I'll put the heel mirror on my baby's foot and this is where the diaper comes in. I like to put the diaper on because I have babies all the time that kick their feet and they always kick their heel warmer off and this actually keeps the heel warmer very nice and warm. So I like to do this. And this is a very helpful tip that I learned from my preceptor. So let's say it's been 15 minutes, so I'm gonna take off my heel warmer. Of 
course I'm gonna put gloves on, but just for this demonstration purpose, I'm not going to have gloves on, but of course make sure to wear gloves. Guys, you're dealing with blood products here. So first things first is I'm going to grab my alcohol swab. So here is my alcohol. And when you are holding your baby, first of all, um, what I was taught by one of my preceptors is um, you don't want to hold your baby like this. So it's very awkward, I know, with my baby's mannequin foot, but usually baby's feet are like this, right? And when I first started off, I used to hold it like this, where I would squeeze like this way. And what you do notice that is when I do it like that, my baby's foot is being bent all the way back, right? And if you're doing this for long periods of time and you're squeezing really hard, you're actually hurting their bone here. They actually have, you know, some cartilage tendon here that you're squeezing behind and it actually starts to hurt them. So my recommendation and what I learned from one of my preceptors that really helped me a lot is when it comes to positioning, this is how she taught me. So she had her hand out like this and she had it down like this. So you're gonna put your baby's foot in between your middle finger and your ring. So it's gonna look like this and then you kind of have your ring and your pinky be the support system for behind your baby's foot. So it's gonna be behind your baby's foot like this. Now you have these two fingers. They're gonna be underneath your baby's heel. Hopefully you guys can see that. Underneath your baby's heel. And then my thumb is on the opposite side where I squeeze. So let's see if you guys can see that. Hopefully you guys can see the angle that I have. But this thumb kind of wraps over the heel and it's over like this. So when I squeeze, I'm squeezing with these three fingers, these two and my thumb. So I squeeze with these under my baby's heel. Can you guys see that? These two protect the back of my baby's heel. So when you squeeze, you notice that it doesn't go all the way back, right? And then when you hold the heel, it should be like this. When you squeeze these fingers. With these two, it also helps because you can milk the bottom of the foot. Two, if you need more blood, meal the bottom of the foot. So let's do it again. So my hand is like this. I have my baby's heel. I kind of put it in between my middle and ring. I have the two, these two on the back of the baby's foot. These two go underneath the baby's foot and this goes over. So my heel looks like this when I squeeze. Okay, so then now I'm gonna have my alcohol Wipe my baby's foot. When it comes to poking, don't ever poke underneath the, the heel. There is um, a nerve down there that you can damage. So you always wanna make sure you do it at the V. So when you look at your own foot, you notice your foot is like a V, right? You want to poke it at the V of the baby's foot. Don't ever poke underneath the baby. Always on the sides. And then with these kind of pokers too, you want it at an angle too. Oops. So that's what you wanna do. So let's say I poke my baby and usually I like to poke on the side towards me because blood will drip this way by gravity, right? So I will poke on this side and I have my CBC. So I make sure to uncap it and I leave it right next to me. And so typically I start with the CMP first. So this is a complete metabolic panel and this is the CBC, the complete blood count, okay? I usually do this one at the end because this is the one you're afraid of clotting. And so I like to save this for last and that way I made sure that it doesn't clot. So I like to do this one first. So when it comes to milking your baby's foot, you can use these two fingers. You squeeze with these three. So I squeeze, let it drip into my container Shake it a little. You, want, you don't want to shake it too much because you're gonna have blood spraying everywhere. So shake it a little bit so that it drops to the bottom. Squeeze again. Always make sure to let go and release and let your baby's blood refill. Don't keep it squeezed the entire time because then you're restricting blood flow. So let go, let it release. And while you're doing that, shake the blood a little. Squeeze, shake the blood a little. That way it drips to the bottom. And you kind of just keep doing that as you fill the whole tech cap. And then you can let go of your baby, cap this when you're done, leave it off to the side. And now I'm gonna do my CBC one. So make sure to position your baby's heel. Okay, squeeze. With the CBC, this one's the one that tends to clot. So you have to be very careful not to scrape. Don't scrape the blood into the container. Let it drip on its own. So then you squeeze, let it fall in. Let it 
drop all the way to the bottom. You wanna make sure to shake it so that the first drop of blood goes all the way to the bottom. And then you keep squeezing, let the blood fill. Release your hand, shake a little. Squeeze, release, shake a little. Okay, until you fill the whole thing. And then once you're done filling the whole thing, another trick that I learned is make sure you cap it all the way, make sure to twist this so it's all the way closed and then put it upside down. So with the CVC one, I've learned that if you put it on a place that where it's upside down, it tends to clot not as often. So that's my trick. And then of course, in the meantime, while you're doing labs, let's say blood gets all over your baby's foot, make sure to wipe it clean because you want to make sure it's clean. Um, so it's easier for blood to drip through. And then of course at the end, hold some pressure so that way the baby's blood isn't dripping all over the place. And then you put a band-aid. So that's kind of my technique on how I do things when it comes to labs. Hopefully that was helpful and useful to you guys. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys and that you were able to learn something out of this. And please let me know down in the comments below what other videos you like me to do for this series. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.